All right, guys, let's talk about the downside or the side where patients aren't just uberly successful with semaglutide, trizapatide, or other medical weight loss options. What's happening and why might your patients be failing? So everybody loves to chat and loves to share like how the huge success rates of their patients. And I've had patients that have lost you know, 50, 60, 70 pounds, and that's fantastic. But not every patient just magically loses weight. So what are some reasons on for why that may be happening? Number one question to ask is, what is your patient eating? Or more importantly, what are they drinking? Now, semaglutide and trisapatide, the way they work, it's almost a little bit like a gastric sleeve in the sense that food in the stomach will stay there much longer. Um, that slower gastric emptying happens, but it only really happens with bulk. It only happens with food that is chewed. If a person is drinking, uh, whether it's protein shakes, those are very delicious to drink and they can actually help you lose weight, or maybe they're having a glass of wine at night, um, or they're just drinking some calories, they're not getting that like satisfying full feeling still, which is causing them to eat more often than they would like. Really, we need to be um, cautioning our patients, especially those that aren't seeing the results that they want, that to go lay off the liquid, water is still important, of course, but lay off liquid calories, any liquid calories, even if it's something great like a protein uh, shake, they need to go for something that's food that needs to be chewed. Um, that should help create that feeling of fullness. Um, and so that could be one reason why your patients are failing. Uh, number two, uh, where are they injecting? All right. Um, now an injection is an injection. We all, we all know that. However, regardless of what the scientific studies may show, I have definitely had patients who swear up and down, they have different reactions based on where they're injecting their medication. Some love it in their abdomen. They feel like it works better. And when they do their thigh, they don't think it works better. Some, um, they get nauseous when it's in their abdomen. And when they do it in their arm, they don't get nauseous. Like whatever the reason may be, even if it is complete placebo effect, you might talk to your patients about trying a different injection site. Now, when you think about this a little logically, it does kind of make sense. Everybody's are different. Everybody has different, uh, you know, blood vessel concentration, fat pockets, all those kinds of things. So maybe trying a different injection site might work for your patients. Now, of course, this is a suggestion for um, your injection patients, for your sublingual patients, when we're talking about administration, really grill them on how long they're holding that medication in their mouth, because the goal should be 10 minutes. Uh, I know many people consult their patients for three or five. Uh, I think when you say hit three or five, then they think, oh, I'm gonna do half of that. And I'm gonna do one minute. Uh, that's just not long enough. Always tell them to go for 10. And if they only do half of that at five, um, at least they're holding it in there for a good amount of time, but really 10 minutes. And frankly, 10 minutes is hard. Um, if you try squirting a half an ml or a full ml in your mouth and holding it in there for 10 minutes, um, it gets very uncomfortable. Um, it's one of the reasons why I'm a fan of higher concentration of the sublingual. That way you can use less volume for the same dose, but holding it in there. So really drill your patients and don't just say, hey, do you hold it in there for 10 minutes? And they say yes, and you move on. No, no, no. Drill them a little bit. Say, how do you know it's 10 minutes? Do you set a timer? Uh, do you sit down and watch, you know, your favorite show until a commercial? Uh, do you listen to the same three songs and it's 10 minutes? Like, how do you know it's actually 10 minutes? Like that way you you really get to the root that if they're holding it in their mouth, like if they're supposed to. So those are some administration um, things. The last one we like to talk about um, as a reason for maybe patients aren't seeing the success that they'd like. Now, I this one has come up a lot whenever I have a couple, um, a man and a woman who are both starting treatment at the same time. And lo and behold, the man will have much quicker, much bigger, and a much better response. Um, that's, sorry, ladies, that's just the, the male advantage. Um, and kind of what's happening a little bit behind the scenes is probably that woman has been on 
10 times, if not a hundred times diets than the man has. Um, they've yo-yo dieted um, their life. They probably have some hormonal issues, but that going up and down, up and down, up and down can make your body a little resistant to weight loss. Um, it's going to take just a little longer time, might take a little bit higher dosing. And so if you have someone that um, has been on a ton of yo-yo diets, or they're at that point of metabolic dysfunction where they're very close to hitting that almost a diabetic ceiling. You know, maybe their numbers are starting to creep up. They're not quite high enough to be diabetic, but they're not quite low enough to be completely normal either. Um, those patients are just going to take longer as well. They just have more underlying metabolic dysfunction that kind of has to get out of the way first before the weight loss can really start to take place. So it just takes longer for them. So I know it's discouraging when you don't get the results that you want, but whenever you're talking with your patients and consulting with your patients, think of these three things. Uh, you know, what are they eating? How is it being dosed? And what is their history with diets? And if we address those things, and most importantly, if you can address these things before they start treatment, that way you can set good expectations up front. Not only will they be happier with you, but they'll they'll have more proper expectations because we all know that expectations are the thief of joy. Uh, you know, if they start taking it and they expect to lose 20 pounds in a month and they only lose 10 and, you know, they're discouraged on that 10 when any other month, they'd be excited to lose 10 pounds. So um, it's really important to set good expectations with your patients when you're first dispensing uh, these products. And so if you have some of those troubled patients that are failing to lose weight with semaglutide and terzepatide, um, check these ex check these reasons out. Um, that could be kind of the solution to, to figuring it out. And if you need any other help with your independent pharmacy, feel free to reach out to us. Feel free to comment or submit questions to myself, Dr. Lisa Faust. We are here to happy to help you. Uh, I want all independent pharmacy owners to have a thriving pharmacy and uh, we'll talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.